it broke a couple nights ago now from David Ornstein that Eric Ten Hag will be staying at Manchester United next season and the United Twins need to speak about it. First and foremost, before we get into any discussion, hit that like button and subscribe to CM22 ENT for more football oh. content. To the audience, I would, you know, have your say on the discussion as we speak. But Cappy, I would like to know your thoughts on the decision by Ineos to keep Eric Ten Hag and potentially it may go beyond that. A lot of the time I, I do keep these thoughts vague. But for me, throughout this season, I've been mixed. I'm not going to lie. I always try to maintain a contextual understanding. I think that is important. And, and you are one of those guys who always reiterates that to me. I have to big up mm. CM on this one. However, I have not enjoyed a good majority of the football produced on the pitch. I don't think many of us have. Uh -uh. And, and silently and sometimes vocally have questioned some of the decisions Eric Ten Hag has made. In some ways, seeing how we shifted in terms of playing style towards the end of the season only arose more questions than not. Why didn't we do that prior? Why didn't certain players come out of the team beforehand? But understanding that he had one year left on his contract, seeing that he has delivered two trophies in two seasons and that there does seem to be a buy-in from specific players, young and experienced, it does seem like the right thing to do at least for now and there have been talks of potentially himself and Ineos extending his current deal and altering his role to a head coach let me know what you think about that by the way it will be interesting to see what happens next and, and how Manchester United can finally kickstart their summer by adding to a squad that is in desperate need of strengthening in in specific areas, in crucial areas, when I think about, you know, in the, in the defense, the left back position is very frail right oh, now. Yeah. With Terrell Melastia not playing the entire 23 uh, 24 season, Luke Shaw injury prone. Of course, we've lost Rafael Faran. Um, in the midfield, Casemiro could possibly be leaving. That isn't confirmed. We don't know what we're going to be doing with Sofian Amrabat. So that potentially could be a place. Can you look at on the right wing, Jaden Sancho supposedly leaving. Anthony hasn't really kickstarted his Manchester United career at all. So what's going to happen to him going into next season? And and, and of course up top, up top is the the big position being spoken about more times than not because we had Rasmus Hoyland basically as that lone traditional striker there with the likes of Rashford, Bruno Fernandes fitting in from time to time but he was really the only guy relied upon to lead the line and, and I don't think that was fair on his part and I don't think as a team we should be looking at Rasmus or we should have looked at Rasmus Hoyden last season at least as a guy who should be leading the line as Manchester United striker every single week week in week out so yeah there are a lot of areas that we need to strengthen in whether that's going to happen in one window two windows three windows i guess we'll have to find out but the way we operate at least in this one will give us a slight indication as to where this club is going and, and where the hierarchy um or how the hierarchy are going to operate moving forward that being said there is still a structure to be established <laughs> there are still positions that haven't been finalized or or fully explained and broken down to the public to the fan base and i feel like that will happen in due time and I'm, i've always had this kind of ideology this summer we may not see a lot of movement or incomings at least because when i think about all of the the, the structural changes that are going on at manchester united how late the deal was pulled through after the new year I always worried about this summer and how much we were actually going to be able to improve and bolster this squad's opportunities and chances to, to be successful next season. Yeah, uh, and I think it's important to understand the season as a whole, like you just said. 
we have the luxury of being a few weeks removed from that FA Cup win and it's time to look ahead now. I would like to bring up the media circus that began even before Bull was kicked in the final up until the news was revealed about Ten Hag uh, remaining in his position. So many ups and, and downs, stories in all different directions eventually led to this and, and since the announcement it, what's been interesting is finding out all of these stories coming out about what's really been going on and, and how the decisions were made but there was no idea prior to this so I, I would love to actually know the true evaluation process on the part of Ineos and, and how they came to their decision but I doubt it would ever come from the primary source my thought process at least for the last few months has been about seeing out this project Eric Tenag in his first season showed promise in elevating the squad he had after the World Cup concluded we went on a run of seven wins out of ten in the Premier League I believe and the FA Cup run Europa League victory over two legs against Barcelona really got the wheels turning in comparison to this season it was night and day I was hoping to see a progression in the way we performed and looked to be more dominant where applicable. We regressed in multiple areas and that doesn't just mean on the field of play. Injury prevention, training, just all of the things that led to success on a match day seem to go wrong from the very beginning of preseason that is. And that's something we have to avoid this time around. We're two for two. Don't make it three for free. Uh -uh. Please. One thing that never changed was our bad start to the season as well. Two bad starts to be exact. How can you rectify that? By being ready, prepared, fit and raring to go come August time. And that means we've got to get our signings in. In time for the start of the season. No late signings, panic signings because... You've had a, 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 a failure, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Because you've had a bad preparation. Now you're, you're pressured to bring in transfers to, to bolster the squad and, and to help the squad all of a sudden. No, you make your moves, you make your decisions in due time so that when it's time, when, it, when you're ready to rumble, you're actually ready to rumble. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get discussing in the comments. Do you agree with Ineos' final decision to keep Eric Ten Hag for his final year, or the final year of this contract at least, and potentially do you agree with him getting a new contract and Ineos backing him as their manager moving forwards? Let us know in the comment section below, hit a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, We'll see you lot soon. Uh,